that word uh, be a lamp unto our feet, light unto our path. God, help us to walk in the ways of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So we finished off, uh, last week we were learning about the Holy Spirit baptism. There in chapter 14, Jesus had mentioned it. If you go back and you look at uh, Lee verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort. See, with the capital C, okay, on the, on the name Comforter, he's talking about the Holy Spirit. He goes on to tell us that, okay? He's talking about the Holy Spirit, and uh, we're going to see the word Comforter again here in verse 18, but it's dealt with differently. But this word here in verse uh, 16 it comes from the Greek word parakletos, which means an advocate or a intercessor and also a consoler. That's where the word comforter comes from. Okay, so Jesus is promising the Spirit of God. And we look at this situation. He's going to be crucified. He's going to descend pay for our sin. He's going to raise from the dead on the third day. He'll be with them for about 40 days, and then he's going to ascend back to heaven. So he's letting them know. Okay, he's preparing for them for all of this. Because though he's physically going to leave, okay, the Holy Spirit is promised to be with the church. And he's still here. Amen. Amen. And we sing a song, He Abides. It's not talking about the Lord. You know, the Lord does abide. But it's referring to the Holy Ghost. The Comforter abides with us. Amen? Thank God for that. Okay, so we covered some of this. Uh, we can reference Acts chapter 10, verse 44. Now, we know that uh, we covered last week that, and we also covered it in one of our services this past weekend, that in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came, and there was an initial evidence of them speaking in other tongues, okay, not their native tongue. And we, we saw the miracle that God performed in not only filling them with the Holy Ghost and giving them power to be witnesses. You see Peter going from being one, okay, that we're going to see he's going to deny the Lord, okay, when the Lord was about to be crucified. You see him going from that to having the power to be a witness to him being filled with the Holy Spirit with that power to be a witness mm -hmm. and preaching to thousands of people yes. okay with boldness so he received that boldness and you and I can have that boldness too the Holy Spirit is for us okay God brought that miracle there were people from all over for the Feast of the Pentecost and they were able to hear the gospel in their native tongue because God had those saints speaking in their tongues, in their languages. Okay? So, uh, we can also reference Acts 10 and 44. A man by the name of Cornelius and his family get saved there. They're not Jewish people. Okay? So it's not limited to the 12 apostles. It's not limited to the 120 that were in the upper room. As we shared with you, Peter preached to these people. In Acts chapter 2, he told all of these thousands of people, it's for you, your children, as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Okay? So we see that fulfilled in chapter 10. Really, you see it in chapter 8 also, but it doesn't tell you there that they spoke in tongues, but somehow Peter knew, and others knew that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. How do they know? And there had to be some evidence. It more than likely was the same evidence that happened in chapter 2, chapter 10, verse 44, and chapter 19, verse 2, okay, where Paul preached to some people in Ephesus. So we don't see it limited to the day of Pentecost. Okay, you understand what I'm saying? Okay, so it is for every believer. Okay, and if we've not been Filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost, same, same. We should be praying for that. We need it. That's right. Yeah. 
And if they needed it, if he told them and he did, they don't depart from Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Okay? We need it also. Because we don't live in the times that we live are not any less evil than they were back then. Okay? We need the power to be a witness. Okay, so we go on now, chapter 14, and uh, look, at, look at 17. Okay, he tells us who this comforter is, even the spirit of truth, large S, and whom the world cannot receive. He's talking about the unsaved. Anybody can receive it once they get saved. Okay? The unsaved cannot receive it. You've got to be saved to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? Okay, so he's telling us who it is. It's the spirit of truth. He okay, cannot receive because it is, see him not, neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. So there's a distinction there. Okay, now when we teach this, okay, we're not teaching this to say somebody's not saved, they don't have a measure of the Spirit of God, because if you're saved, you do. But God wants you, as we shared, to have the Spirit without measure, just like Jesus. Full of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Baptized in the Holy Spirit, which means to be submerged, engulfed, surrounded. Okay? God wants you to have more of a good thing. Okay? So there's nothing to take offense at. Okay? We love you. God loves you. We just want to tell you the truth. And we want you to have more of the Spirit of God. Okay? <clears throat> So we go on now to verse 18. And look what he says here. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. Now that is a small seed. Okay? I will come to you. Okay? So Jesus will not lead us com leave us comfortless. Small seed comes from the word orphanos. Now what other word can you think of that sounds like that? Orphanos. Orphan. I'm not going to leave you as an orphan. Okay? I'm not going to leave you that way. Okay? So there's a difference between that and the comforter that we read of in verse, or the, the word used in verse 16. Okay? So the idea here is though Jesus is going to die, he is not orphaning them. And like a child, if the, the parents die, they're left without parents. We're not going to be, we're not left alone even though Jesus died. Okay, he didn't leave us alone. Okay? He's going to come back from the dead, and he's going to even appear to them. Okay, now let's look at some scripture to back this up. We'll jump forward to John chapter 20. It's there in the study guide. Then the same day of the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, saith unto them, Peace be unto you. When he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Now, there's one thing when we're taught something and when we hear something, because we don't really understand what it's going to be like when we go through what we're being prepared for. Okay? That's true in many different things. I mean, you could, maybe when you were a kid, and you were going to go to kindergarten, oh. and you're, maybe your mom and dad sat you down and talked to you, you know, we're going to leave you there, it's going to be okay, there's other kids, you're going to have fun, yeah. the body from down the street's going to be there, then you got there, and mom said, give you a kiss on the cheek, and she walked off, and you're like, ah! some kids were like, I'm glad to see her, but Okay? Because it's not, maybe you didn't grasp. You don't, you don't sense the, you don't really know how things are really going to be until they happen. And that's that way in many areas of life. We have these preconceived ideas of the way things are going to be. Yeah, dear God, yeah, we're good, we're good. We're good, Jesus. And then he's not there. But before he was gone, they saw him. Whip. They saw him beat. They saw him get his beard plucked out. Imagine what that did to them. Then they saw him crucified, and they, they saw him die, and they took him down and put him in the tomb. 
and sealed it up. Okay, though they knew what he had said, it's a little different when you're going through it. Okay, we have the example of the two that were on the road to Emmaus that were sad. And Jesus walked with them, came up, started walking with them. They didn't recognize him. They just talking about, oh, you know, he's crucified. Oh, you know. Then he began to expound to them okay, from the Word of God and, and uh, broke bread with them. And they realized, okay, their hearts began to burn within them. You know, thank yes. God. That's one thing that the Comforter does. The Holy Spirit not only gives you power to be a witness, okay, but we are to stir up that gift that is in us. Okay, by the laying on of hands, by prayer, that has been that gift of the Holy Ghost. That Holy Ghost brings all things to our remembrance, whatever the Lord has said. It helps us to remember what the Word of God says. Yeah. There's many different things that the Holy Spirit does. So here they were, okay, and Jesus was preparing them, okay, but they saw all of that take place, and as we see here, when they saw him again, then they were glad. Okay? Look at Acts 1 and 3. Okay, Jesus, uh, being, speaking of Jesus here, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So he came and he showed himself to them again after he was crucified and he resurrected. Let's go to verse 19. Yet a little while and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye live also. Ye shall live also. Okay? So Jesus would soon be crucified. The world would not see him afterwards, but the disciples would physically see him, as we already shared out of Acts 1 and 3, okay, for 40 days. Okay? Acts 10 and, 9, and 39, and a little further down from this, Peter's going to, uh, is preaching to these people in Cornelius' house, and these people are going to get filled with the Holy Ghost. But let's look what he says here as he's preaching to them. And we are witnesses of these things, Peter and the rest of the apostles, okay, and the disciples, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. What's, what's a cross made out of? And out of wood. Where did wood come from? A tree. A tree. <laughs> okay. All right. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, okay, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. So after his ascension, okay, they and we see him through faith. Now, his ascension is when he went back to heaven. And you can read about that at the end of Luke. You see here in the book of Acts. Okay, chapter 2. Or chapter 1, excuse me. Yeah, so after he went back to heaven, they had to walk by faith and not by sight. And it's the same way that you and I see him. Okay? We don't physically see him. I don't... You know, never physically seen the Lord. Okay? And I'll say there are very few people that have. You know, you look at the Word of God, and I just throw this out there. You have 6,000 years of human history. There are very few people that actually saw God or talked with God. Okay? And so, why did we tell, tell, you, tell you that? Because... Uh, and when they did, it was normally some great thing was going to take place. Okay, like God telling Noah to build an ark because he's going to flood the world. Or, uh, you know, God having Moses lead the people out of Egypt, millions of Jews. Okay, other things like that. Having the Apostle Paul go and begin to reach out to the Gentiles and giving him knowledge of the word of God so he could write all these books that we learn from. So very few, and it was always something very important, very serious, 
Why, why are we saying that? Because you hear people say, like, God always told them something. Like they're hearing voices or something like that. You know, they're very basic things. God gives us intelligence. Now, we do pray about what we do. Yes. And God can impress things upon your heart. Yeah. Okay? But you don't, you shouldn't expect that for every little thing, and you even if you pray about it, that there's going to be some loud, audible voice. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, you start hearing voices and stuff. Uh-oh. Okay? Now, why does God tell, need to tell us what color socks to wear? <laughs> you can't figure that out? <laughs> now, the Bible does say to cast all of our care upon him or he cares for us. But there are some things that God has given us intelligence yes. that we can figure out. Amen. Okay? Anyway, I'm not trying to be silly or anything like that. And God does impress things upon your heart. You know, I've, we've been driving before and felt that you need to go this way. Yeah. You know, I didn't hear some voice, go to take a ride on Tucson. <laughs> I didn't hear that. But you you feel maybe you need to avoid an area, and later on you find out maybe there was a wreck. Right. Or something like that. And then God, it does work in the supernatural. We're not taken away from that. Right. Okay, but neither do we want to go on the other far end. Where everything we do, God is telling us, talking to us, and, you know, and because things like that, uh, it really kind of brings a reproach upon the church. Okay, now I give you a biblical example. Maybe you've read it and you wondered what was going on. There was a girl that was a fortune teller in the Bible, and she had some people that promoted her, and they made their living by her. In divination, which is witchcraft. Okay, well, she found out about Paul. She began to follow him around and say, these men teach the right way of God. And you would think that would have been a good thing, but Paul rebuked her and cast the spirit out of her. Why did he do that? Because what was happening, people were uh, in their mind thinking, well, this Christianity that Paul and them are promoting is the same as what this girl's been doing. Right. Now look, she's she's in on it with them. And it's not the same. That's right. That's right. Okay? Paul wanted people to know we're not part of that. Okay? And God wanted to deliver, deliver the girl. So anyway. I just throw that out there. It's not on your study guide, but anyway, there we go. Okay? So, they, he ascended, and, and we see him by faith. Okay? And, brothers and sisters, we've been preaching and teaching. We have abundant life right now. We have eternal life. Okay? We're going to be eternally with him, but you have abundant life right now. Okay? John 10, 10, the thief cometh out, but for to steal, to kill, and destroy. I have come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. Okay, John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said in her eye, the resurrection of the life, he that believeth on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. 1 Corinthians 15, 21, since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as an Adam all die, even so in Christ, all shall be made alive. Okay, but every man after his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Ephesians 2 and 1, you have he quickened. That word means made alive. Who we were dead in trespasses and sins. He spiritually made us alive. We have a life of God in us. And right now, whether or not we can see Jesus doesn't change that. Okay? Thank God that we have the comforter. He does many things, and we'll get into some of that more in chapter 15 and 16. Okay, let's go to verse 20. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. Amen. Okay, so after that day, that day that he resurrected, after our sins were paid for, 
after the veil of the temple was rent in twain. Okay, we are in one another, and it's not hard to understand this. Okay, now we just pray for Sister Collins. If you would ask Brother Collins and Jeremy, and Jeremy, they would say that their mother is in their heart. Right? Okay, it's not like some science fiction horror movie, you know, you see some alien trying to come out of somebody. <laughs> oh, Brother, what's that? Look at my wife's in me. You know what I mean? <laughs> kicking right now. <laughs> Woo! Okay, that's silly, Pastor. Well, sometimes people have a, a wrong, uh, kind of a silly concept of things. Yes. Okay, God is in our heart. Okay? Just like we say that people are in our heart. You know, we have people that have passed away. They're still in our heart. Yes. Okay? This is not a hard con concept to understand. Like a loved one or a member, or a family member or a friend. Okay, we're in one another's hearts. As a family, we are one. No, we're not the same person. But we're united. We're one in unity. And that's the way we are in God. And that's the way God is. That's the way the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is. They're one in unity. If they were the same person, we could just use the word God throughout the Bible. But it doesn't happen that way, does it? Even in the Old Testament. You can read about the Lord on the earth calling down fire from the Lord in heaven. Okay? And Solomon and Gomorrah. And other, other things. Okay, verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Okay, so this is proof of love for God. We not only have his commandments, but we keep them. When we do, God reciprocates that love. God extends his love to us when we're sinners, and if we receive it and show God love in return by obeying, God reciprocates that love right back to us. Amen. It's a continual thing, brothers and sisters. Thank God for that. Romans 5 and 8. God commended his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 1 John 4 19. We love him because he first loved us. James 4 and 8. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Okay? So God will make himself known to us or manifest. We now have a relationship. I'm getting to know Jesus and being made like him. Okay, this all goes, you go back to verse 7, look at verse 7, okay, of chapter 14. Okay, you had known me, you should have known my father also. And henceforth, you know him and have seen him. So it all goes together with that. Okay, verse 7 there. We are experiencing and learning what God is like, okay, as they did by being with Jesus. Verse 23. Okay. Verse 23. Did I skip 22? Judas said unto him, Lord, not a spirit. Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Okay, so Judas, not the one that would betray the Lord, but this is the brother of James, the one who wrote the book of Jude. Okay? We have an example there showing um, he was the brother of James. Okay, and then also uh, the list of the different apostles there out of Acts 1.13. Okay, so he was looking at things in a natural sense. Okay, how will we see you physically, naturally? And others will not see you. This is the way he was thinking. And as we showed you out of Acts, Acts chapter 10, he did not only appear to those Excuse me. He did only appear to those he chose in the physical. But Jesus was speaking of making himself and the Father known to all people spiritually after his ascension. And there were those limited ones that he appeared to physically after he rose from the dead. But after his ascension back to heaven, okay, what are we to do, church? We're going to preach this gospel to every creature. God wants to make himself known to everyone. Okay? Everyone. <clears throat> Jesus
Jesus answers, if we love, we will obey the word of God. Jesus and the Father, and again, an example of the Trinity, will make their abode with us. Jesus is not with everyone. When people say things like that, they say, well, you know, God's with everyone. No, he's not. Okay? He may have mercy and he may protect people, okay? But not everyone sees or knows him. Somebody explains something to you, and you understand it in your mind, what do you say? Oh, I see. Okay? Well, we get it, don't we? Yes. We got it. Amen. We have faith in the Lord. Okay? He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 24. Oh, thank God, it's getting warmer in here now. Verse 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. The word which you hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Okay? That's pretty self-explanatory. We can understand that. You know, people say that they love God and they're not obeying Him. They don't love God. Okay? Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, verse 26, which is the Holy Ghost, okay, cut and dry right there, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Holy Ghost is sent by the Father at the request of Jesus. He said that he would pray to the Father, back in verse 16, the Holy Ghost will teach you and remind you of God's word. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's harder to understand God's word. Spiritual things are spiritually discerned or understood. Okay? Well, how are we going to understand spiritual things without the Spirit of God in our life? Exactly. So when you get saved, God gives you a measure of the Spirit. You can understand to some degree. But you know what? When you get the Holy Ghost, oh, baptism, God gives you a greater understanding. Amen. Okay? Verse 27. Let's go ahead and finish up the chapter. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay, he tells us again, neither let it be afraid. Okay, so God's peace is not dependent on circumstances or what is happening. Okay, listen. Peace and happiness are not the same thing. You know that? You can be sad about something and still have peace in your heart. Okay? Happiness. It has the same root word as happenstance. It's happy. It means an occurrence or a happening. Happiness is based on what's happening, the situation. Peace that God is talking about comes from God. This is why that we can have peace regardless of what is happening. Your yes. peace doesn't come from the situation. Your peace comes from God. Amen. Okay? I'll give you an example there. Jesus in the ship during the storm. Mm -hmm. While they were all wigged out, <laughs> trying to wake him up, and then telling them, why don't you care that we perish? You think I'm doing this old stinking fishing boat with you? I could be sitting on my throne in heaven. But I'm here. I don't know. You know, there's a fishing boat. They were fishermen. Probably pretty, pretty gross. Okay, anyway. Okay. Jesus wasn't stressed out. He had peace. And he spoke peace to the storm. And guess what? Then everything else had peace too. Because he told it to. Peace, be still. Wow. <laughs> the peace of God. The Bible says it passes all understanding. It's not based on what we're experiencing. And I know, I understand. Trust me, I understand. You know, there, there are moments that are more enjoyable than others. Okay, but we don't have to allow our peace to be taken from us. That's right. Hold your peace. Not only that doesn't mean close your mouth. It can mean that. 
But I can hold on to the peace that God has given me. Okay? We can have peace regardless of what's happening. Okay? Just like Jesus. Verse 28. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would rejoice because I said I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. So Jesus was telling them beforehand that he would ascend back to the Father. This shows the fulfillment of what he was sent to do. It also shows the promise of verse 16, okay? The sending of the Comforter would be fulfilled, okay? John 16 and 7, go a little forward. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you, okay? The Father is the head of the Trinity, and I've got some scripture there for you, all right? You look that up. You know, and, and I'm not directing this to anyone. I'm just giving you an example from my own personal life. Okay, when I graduated from high school, I told you this before, and my dad knew me. I thought I was going to goof around all summer. And, uh, you know, hang out with my, with my buddies, whatever I was going to do. I graduated on a Friday night. I got up on Saturday and went out in the backyard. We had a really big backyard and there was a big old pecan tree. My dad had a little like a yard rocking chair type thing out there. He'd sit out there and drink iced tea in the shade. And I went out there. He looked at me at his glass of tea. He said, what you gonna do? I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not staying here. Uh-oh. He made me move out, get a job, get my own place to stay. It's not because he didn't love me. It's not because he was mean. But he wanted me to be my own man. He wanted me to grow up. He wanted me to learn responsibility. And I tell people all the time, it's the best thing he ever did for me. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> Jesus didn't stay here so that we would always... He went back to heaven. He left us the Holy Spirit. But he's teaching us to walk by faith. He's making us mature Christians. We don't have to be like that little kid that's going to kindergarten because they no longer see mom. The world is ending. But we can grow up and realize whether I see them or not, it's going to be okay. They still love me. Okay? Whether I see God or not, Brother and sister, God loves me. I have faith in him. Okay? I know that the presence of the Holy Spirit is with me. Jesus is in my heart. Okay? Same type of deal. Let's look at verse 29 now. We're going to go ahead and close this up because I'm, I'm over time already. And now I have told you before it come to pass that when it has come to pass, you might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh, he's talking about the devil, and have nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, and let us go hence. So when it comes to pass, he, when he is crucified and taken from them for a short while, for the three days, they would believe that he would raise and go back to the Father. See? You know, imagine in their mind, you know, you're, you're God. You're telling us you're the Son of God and you're dying. Verse 30, okay, we read it. It would get even dark, it would get very dark spiritually and, and literally for a time. And Satan would be allowed to have Jesus killed. And in doing so, Satan would be defeated. Okay, his hatred brought him his own destruction. Not only would be 
not only would he be destroyed, but Jesus would be exalted because of his innocence, sinlessness, and his obedience. Okay? Satan had nothing in him. The people who were created to be in God's image and to be the heir of all things could be restored to their position with God. Okay? You're not going to outsmart God. He has all power. He knows all things. Those who submit to God and believe and follow will win with God, with Jesus. Okay? Those who don't, they're going to lose with the devil. All right. You, the, the, the team's already won. He's already won. He's already seated back at the right hand of God the Father with all power. So, sister, all we got to do is stay on the team. That's all we got to do. Stay on the team. Okay? Victory is already won. It's already a billion to zero. <laughs> We're just waiting for the clock to run out, brothers. <laughs> I hope we're at the two-minute warning already. <laughs> okay? So remember that. Okay, keep that in your heart and in your mind. We've already won in Jesus. Okay, so we'll stop right there. Thursday, communion service, followed by a Christmas party. We're going to have a good time. Amen. I'm hungry. Okay? God bless you. You don't have to bring anything. See? My yeah. Oh yeah, bring your bring your gift exchange kit. Okay? God bless you is our prayer. Let's go ahead and dismiss. And uh, brother Ben, why don't you dismiss us, please? Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be here, allowing us to be in your house. Uh, bless those that are not here and those that are here that you please continue to bless us in all that we do reading your word following your um, your guidance um, we just love you we praise you our lord god who died for us that we are going to be celebrating your birth our wonderful savior 